Hello you lot, Miller Corner here and welcome to a decidedly soggy episode of Super Seicento. The weather is distinctly British today but that's alright because we're working inside the car. Now normally the Seicento relies on the back of the car for its audio for the stereo, specifically the speakers built into the parcel shelf here. But obviously since I did my rear seat delete way back in 2020, I got rid of my parcel shelf. And that means since then, the only speakers I've had are the standard ones built into the dashboard. And that means it's only okay. The more miles I do in this car, the more I want a good stereo. So the plan for today is I'm gonna take the speakers out of this parcel shelf and fit them into the back of the car. Now you might notice I've taken the liberty of already removing the passenger seat and I've got down there a coilover spanner, uh, some painkillers there and an empty milk carton. I'll let you work out what that's there for. And the plan is I'm gonna remove these standard rear door cards, I guess, even though they're not doors, but you know what I mean. And I'm gonna make some new flat panels that go here to integrate those speakers that would be on the parcel shelf. Now you might notice just there that the wiring for the speakers in the parcel shelf still exists. I didn't cut it, I just cable tied it up out of the way. And that means all I should have to do is feed it back through this inner arch up to where my new speaker mount thing is gonna be on this door card. So first of all, I've gotta take this front rear seat delete panel off, then take those rear door cards off, and then we can start cutting stuff. Right, so next up, we need to transfer the template from the old door cards onto this slightly second hand, but also entirely free piece of three millimeter thick plywood. And the plan is I've got a pencil here, draw all the way around it, template it, cut it out with a jigsaw. So just take your time with this good thick pencil line all the way around it because when you're cutting with a jigsaw you need to make sure that you can see what you're doing. So there you have it, on the plywood is an outline of our original door card and now we can hopefully cut this out and transfer it onto a new one. With the plywood balanced on a highly technical industry grade table or two wheelie bins, I leave it to a competent adult to use the jigsaw to cut out the first door card. It's important to be slow and precise with the blade to keep it as close to the outline as possible. I think she's free. Hey, we can clean all that up. Yeah, clean all that with sander. With a rough cut done, I offer it up in the car to check the shape. After a bit of sanding and fine trimming to shape it more precisely, we've got a new rear panel that fits perfectly on both sides. Now the theory goes they are the same, so it should fit. And indeed, they do. Next, the speakers are removed from the parcel shelf. We have to mount the speakers towards the back of the new panels since they go inside frames that won't clear the bodywork of the car at the front. It's a lot of trial, error and eyeballing to make sure they clear everywhere and it's more of an issue on the driver's side thanks to the extra metal work of the fuel filler. With rough positioning worked out, an outline of the speaker is drawn onto our new panel and Dad drills a single hole inside the outline to get the jigsaw into it and cut the speaker hole out. It's important to make the hole the size of the speaker itself, not the grill, since that sits in front and the screws go through it to hold the speaker on at the back. The speaker grille and framework fit perfectly, but we then discover that one of the legs fouls on the bodywork. It takes three goes of eyeballing, guessing and drilling new screw holes to gradually rotate the speaker before finally it clears everywhere. Ha ha! Victory! What you done? It fits and everything! Yeah. I just rotated it one. Yeah, and that was enough. Boshty. Like oh, a bloody fine. boss, mate. Look at that. Perfect. Ha ha! The passenger side is the same, but with less awkward metal work. So we trace the driver's side card onto the plywood and, brace yourselves, I grab the jigsaw to cut it out. As you'll see later, this isn't the last time that I tempt fate with power tools in this episode. Now both new panels are cut out, we can work out the speaker wiring. So this can go here. Yeah, feed it up through here. That's going to join on that, which will feed this speaker that here. One. So it's this one that we've got to extend. That one's got to be extended. Oh, so that's absolutely fine. That's Yeah, that's fine. The wiring that joins the speakers isn't long enough. So we cut it, extend the wiring, run it through an existing hole in the bodywork, and crimp on new spade connectors to allow them to be installed separately. 
and with shots that are this well framed, it's pretty obvious why I make videos for a living. Wiring done and insulated, it's time to test. I've got interference. You won't have heard any of that because it was copyrighted music, but take our word, it works and it works very well. Now both panels are fitted up for speakers, which also work, it's time to carpet them. I'm using stretchy camper carpet like I have before, since it's cheap, hard wearing and easy to work with for stuff like this. First the panels are laid onto the carpet and a rough shape cut around them with some hefty overhang. With the rest of the roll cut out of the way, I then trim the carpet closer and more neatly to the panel before cutting flaps anywhere where there are curves, so the carpet can be tucked around them. Then it's onto the glue, which gets sprayed onto the back of the carpet and the panel, ready to stick them together. Wait, I said the back of the panel, you idiot. Oh, what a fuss. After letting that coat of glue dry, the panel gets flipped upside down and both surfaces are generously sprayed with glue. You'll notice that I'm doing this in the workshop because the glue works best when the adhesive itself and the surfaces aren't cold. So they were kept warm in the house overnight and then we stuck them together in the heated workshop. And yes, this episode is a bit disjointed as to the order it was filmed. I've ruined the magic! With the carpet and panel stuck together, I let the glue dry before cutting flaps from behind for the speaker to go through. They then get folded in and glued in place before being weighed down with a highly technical weighting device and left overnight to dry. The next morning, we press a mixture of pins and drill bits through the speaker holes from behind to give the screws something to aim for. Then it's a two-man job to line the pins up through the speaker beneath the panel and the grill above it before chasing the pins out with the screws and tightening them into place. It's fiddly, but it works, and with the speakers mounted in the panels, I can take them over to the car, connect the wiring and use strategically placed Velcro tape to hold them in place. If I'm honest, this didn't work brilliantly. The panels are too heavy for the adhesive to hold them up, and on my first drive after fitting them, one of them fell off. But for now, let's let pre-editing this video, Joe, enjoy the moment that the panels initially fitted. That's actually good, I'm pleased with that. That looks really good. Look at that! That looks really good. So the wiring's all tucked under there and nice and clear, that's not hitting anything, and it will fit under those. I can then put the panel across here to keep everything flush. And that, dear viewer, is done. Another interior change I want to make is the seats. Now for quite a few years now, I've had a couple of Subaru Impreza turbo seats in the Super Seicento. They're really nice seats, they're comfortable and they look great. However, for a while now, I've been eyeing up a pair of these, Abarth 500 seats. And as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm sitting on one, I've bought a pair. So this is the underside of the Abarth seats and the rails are perfect for the Seicento. They're the right length, they're the right width apart, they're the right measurements, these are ready to go. But they do have these four feet on them designed to make them fit into the floor of a Fiat 500. These are held on, not with bolts unfortunately, with these kind of, they're sort of big rivets that go all the way through and they can't very easily be knocked out with a screwdriver or anything. And that means we have to use some very delicate, sympathetic methods to remove them. Sympathetic and gentle. Also, I was wearing glasses while I was doing that. Always wear glasses using power tools, particularly angle grinders. Removing the rest of the feet involves a similar amount of sympathetic treatment to the studs and feet with the angle grinder. A chisel and hammer are the easiest way to knock out what's left of the studs, and with everything out of the rails and cleaned up, we can start looking at the fitment. So I've just been measuring the distance between the factory seat bolt holes to see what kind of changes we might have to make to our new seats. And if you look closely, the distance between our bolt holes is 35 centimeters exactly from the edge of one bolt hole to the edge of the other. And if we go and look at our lovely new seats, you'll see that at 35 centimeters, the gap between the edge of that hole there 
and the edge of that upper hole there, this is quite hard to film one-handed, is 35 centimeters. So on this side at least, this runner will just bolt in using the standard holes with the studs in that had those adaptive feet into them. Now on this side, it's not quite so clear cut. If we have a look there, 35 centimeters on the edge of there doesn't really line up. And we can make this reach just about, I think that low on there is 36. So we may have to open out one of these holes slightly with a drill bit and do a bit of wiggling to make it fit. But nonetheless, I'm gonna make this fit and then I'm gonna tell you how I did it. And just like that, one Abarth 500 seat in the Super Seicento. How awesome does that look? And here is how we did it. So starting on the front right, or offside front if you'd rather, uh, we used one of these sort of rectangular holes which is actually designed for the teeth that allow you to move the seat on the sliders to go into. But of course the Seicento isn't big enough for this seat to go all the way forward so that hole isn't being used anyway. So it's the second one down, we just put a drill bit in there big enough for the standard seat bolts and opened it out, jobs are good. For front left we used one of the pre-existing holes that had those kind of rivet stud things in them and again all we had to do was use a drill bit and open it out big enough for the front left bolt to go into it. Easy peasy. Rear right we again use one of the existing stud holes although pay close attention to the fact we use the middle one of those three because the other two weren't in quite the right place to allow us to fit anything on the front right so we had to use the middle one there to get it to line up. On the rear left we used the rearmost hole there and again opened it out with a drill bit that one only just fits that was a very tight fit and we did it corner to corner so we did back left and front right and then the reverse of that but it does work and it must be said looks really rather good so pay close attention to the holes that I've used for this one and you can't go far wrong. Will it be the same for the other seat? Well let's pull out the Subaru seat for the last time and find out. Right, driver's seat is now physically in the car, already looking awesome. That hole there is pretty much lining up. I've slightly nudged the seat there, which is why it's not perfect, but that does pretty much line up. That bolt hole there does pretty much line up with that rectangular hole for the seat adjustment tooth. So first port of call is drill that hole out a little bit to accommodate the bolt, drill that hole out to accommodate the bolt, and then once we've got the front in, we can move it forward, have a look at the back. The front two are in. Now the front right went straight in, dropped the bolt straight down in, wound it in, jobs are good un. And the front left, I did have to kind of lever it this way a bit with some shoving and some forcing and no swearing, you understand. And now that one is in. So let's move the seat forward and see what we're like at the back. This one looks like it will line up. It's only the fact that only the two front bolts are in, which is making it kind of bend at that funny angle. But if we put them all in at the same time, that will line up with that bolt hole there, which is a good thing. On this side, we're not so lucky. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, the yellow is obviously the bit of exposed metal where you bolt into the car and it's pretty much exactly in between these two holes. So we can't just drill a hole straight down the middle, otherwise we'll end up with a massive hole and the seat will physically move, which is obviously safe. Right, so this is where things get a bit high tech. You might notice I'm using my new vernier calipers, no tape measures for me, and you can see the gap between these two holes is 23 millimeters. Now there is another front bolt hole at the front of this rail, which is 23 millimeters further ahead of the hole that I've drilled out to use. So what I'm hoping is move the hole at the front effectively 23 millimeters back by using one of these existing circular holes, that will move that one 23 millimeters back, which should line up with that hole, and in theory, it should then go in, but let's put that into practice. After much eyeballing, measuring, drilling, and adjusting, the driver's seat is eventually fitted. So, how did we go about it? Front right, second hole in, you will need to drill it out very slightly though, because the hole isn't quite big enough for the standard seat bolts. Front left, much the same story, just slightly drill it out and the bolt will go in like a dream. Rear right, Use the existing hole from one of the studs that held the feet on, but you will have to drill it out and elongate it very slightly so you don't have to bend the thing into oblivion to make it fit. Back left is the hardest one though. You need a bolt hole just ahead of the third existing one. So grab a drill bit that's the same size as one of your seat belts and put it pretty much immediately in front of it, but do leave enough metal in between that this isn't gonna pull through when you slide the seat backwards and forwards. Add all those steps together and what you get are a pair of awesome looking Avarth seats in your say cento or cinquecento and how good do these look i'm absolutely just chuffed with those they look the part and for a quick sitting test 
Oh, yep, they feel the part as well. Right, it's a couple of weeks later and I'm not entirely happy. To be honest, you can probably tell that Velcro tape may not actually be strong enough, particularly when you've got the weight of the speaker on there, they don't really stay on. And when you're driving along, this makes quite an annoying rubbing and rattling noise. So the plan is we're gonna pull these off and put in a slightly less invisible but entirely more functional solution for holding these on, which you can do with a snap of the fingers. Right, panels are off and I've also removed all the Velcro tape that was very much not up to the job. Now before I said about reattaching those panels, there's one other thing that I want to improve about this car in my continued quest to sound deaden everything to make it as refined and quiet as possible when at speed. Now the raw skin of a car is a bit like the skin on a drum in that it just wants to vibrate, particularly in a front wheel drive car where there's not much suspension stuff or drive shafts or anything going on back here. And that means it sounds quite vibrating and that's where a lot of your noise comes from at speed particularly when you've got a noisy exhaust vibrating through it as well this one makes a small cheap front wheel drive car unrefined so much like i've done with the rest of the car here i'm going to be sound deadening this and because it is below 10 degrees ambient temperature outside i've run an extension lead in and i've got a little heater here to warm up my lovely sheets of sound deadener before they go on the car so let's tie up to that and then when that's all done we can actually get those panels attached properly And after. That's a lot more solid, a lot less rattly, and hopefully that should translate to a much calmer, much more refined cruising experience when we're at high speeds. Right, so now that's been sorted, let's actually get these panels attached. The solution is to sparingly use self-tappers. After working out where best to affix the panels to the car, we put tape on the panel in the right places, then use a short, sharp buzz with the drill to make holes through it. We shove small screwdrivers through the holes so as not to lose them, line the panel up inside the car, and then use the screwdrivers to gently mark the paint for where to drill the mounting holes. This is best done slowly and gently to avoid making any speed holes in the outer skin of the car. With holes made, the screws can be wound through the panel into the car itself and then finished off with some black number plate screw caps. The end result looks 98% as good as before, but is 100% more attached. We mark the screw holes in the other panel in the same place for a similar screw placement and then repeat the process to fit it. As you can tell, this was done pretty late in the day, so let's cut to the daytime to see the fitted panels in all their glory. So there we have it, Avar 500 seats fitted and new custom rear door cards with speakers made and fitted as well. And these are two interior mods that I couldn't be happier with. They're both cost effective for a start. The Avar seats are about 150 quid, depending on which ones you go for. And you can make those rear door cards for between 20 and 40 quid, depending on where you buy your materials from. The Avar seats, I way prefer to the Subaru ones. They look more modern, they're more brand appropriate being Avar, and they're still supportive and comfortable. The rear door panels with speakers in meanwhile is a really cost effective way to make your interior a little bit different. You're probably not going to put people in the back anyway and having speakers back there gives a much fuller, richer sound which you can complement nicely with a little under seat subwoofer. The interior of this car is now coming together really nicely and I'd say it's pretty much done. I'm really happy with it. Let me know in the comments what you do differently if you wanted to customise your audio setup and I'll catch you very soon everybody. Thanks for watching and have a good one.